Good morning, boys and girls. It's Karen Lee here in my living room in South Berwick for Karen Reads. We're back to books of longer length, and I have a very special one to share with you today. It's called Bird Song by Julie Flett. She is a Native American called a Cree Matisse, which means her ancestors were Cree women and fur traders, French fur traders. She uses some Cree words in her story and I'll point those out. Okay. Spring. It's a mucky spring morning as we pack up the last of our belongings and leave our little home in the city by the sea. I'm going to miss my friends and cousins and aunties and uncles. I'm going to miss my bedroom window and the tree outside. Goodbye tree friend, I whisper. We drive through the country and over the mountains, alongside rivers and fields of horses. We stop to see a lone coyote crossing the road. And you'll see the coyote. Maybe you could see him down at the bottom on the road. Our new home sits on a hill overlooking a field and past it, another home. In that home lives an older woman named Agnes. The field is covered in snowdrops. Our new home has two trees outside. and creaky stairs inside. My new room has a shelf for books and pictures and a desk for drawing, but I don't feel like drawing. My hands are cold. My mom and I bundle up together under the covers in our new home in the country, far from the sea. summer. Our new home hums with peeps and whistles and rivets and chirps. I watch Agnes, our neighbor, working on something in her yard. Why don't you visit her, Katharina, my mom says. I nod. Okay. I take our dog, Oho, with me. Oho means owl in Cree. Hello, Agnes, I say. 
You must be Katharina, she says. Woof, all oh, hope barks. Your mom has told me all about you, Agnes says. She says you love to draw. I do. Agnes loves to make things out of clay. She shows us around her yard. There are berries and flowers and so many of her clay things. They look like branches and birds and flowers. Visit me again soon, Katharina, Agnes says with a smile. I smile back and give her a big wave. I can't wait to go home and start drawing. I do visit Agnes again and again and again. Agnes digs in her garden. I help by gathering extra leaves that'll get mixed into the soil. The worms love this. It's getting cold and windy and creaky. Agnes says she's getting creaky too. Would you like to see what I'm working on, Katharina, she asks. I like that, I say. Agnes is working on a pot that's round and bright. She tells me about the waxing and waning moons. I tell her about Cree seasons. This month is called Pimi Haupivism, the migrating moon when birds start to move. Here comes the moon. Oh, excuse me. There's the waxing and waning moons. Here come the moon, comes the moon and two shiny seagulls, and there go the geese. It's the Cree season of migrating. Winter. It's Oho's first snow. We toboggan until my snow chute is soggy and Oho is covered with tiny snowballs, tiny snowballs.
afterwards, we warm up with mom by the fire and then help her finish making salmon stew to share with Agnes. Agnes hasn't been out as much and needs a little help over the winter. She likes the salmon stew. Her daughter, who has come to stay for a while, likes it too. Agnes sends me home with a cup full of bulbs, snowdrop bulbs to plant in the field next autumn. They look like tiny moons. They give me more ideas for pictures. My fingers itch in my mittens. Spring. Agnes has grown weaker over the winter. Still, from her bed, we can hear the spring birds singing their songs and the tickle of the branches against her window. We listen to the sounds together. The snowdrops are peeking out. I wish Agnes could see them. I have an idea. I run home and gather up all of my drawings. Agnes's daughter meets me at the door and we take two ladders from the closet. When we're done, Agnes says it's like a poem for her heart. Then I sit with Agnes and we talk about making things, mucky things and things with strings and songs and paper and words. And then we sit quietly together on Agnes's bed until it's time to say goodbye. So all of her drawings are up on Agnes's wall. Like a poem for Agnes's heart. I'd leave with an ache in my heart, but I'm so glad to know my friend Agnes. Okay, what a beautiful book. Take care until I see you next time. Bye-bye.